else. It is our season of stewardship. And uh, as we prayerfully consider the gifts that we might offer back to God and thanksgiving for this church, this faith community, and all of the ministries we support, we have been inviting some of our friends to come up and share a brief minute. And today, Pat Keithley is going to come up and say a word. Thanks, Pat. Good morning. I've been asked to say a little bit about the ministries that I've been involved in at St. Peter's in the Woods. The theme of this year's stewardship campaign is Broken Open. And when I heard that theme, I immediately thought of the music ministry. For those of us for whom a good time involves getting together with friends and singing, the onset of the pandemic was simply for us about feeling broken. To discover that this erstwhile healthy, heartwarming, spirit-lifting activity of singing that we so relished had now become a potential super spreader event that could cause illness and even death was simply heartbreaking. Would choirs and congregational singing ever return? When Chad announced his leaving, I found myself one of many music teachers and music directors around the country trying to keep a music program going despite the difficulties of isolation. Zoom simply does not support multiple people making sound at once. The mission immediately was twofold, to keep the choir community singing and learning and to provide some kind of musical contribution to our online worship. Some of our choir community met on a Thursday night on Zoom for vocalizing and hymn singing and note learning and evening prayer. I led from the piano at my home and bought from the sanctuary here. Everyone sang at home alone on mute. It was not necessarily a satisfying experience, <laughs> but better than losing our voices and our skills through lack of use. Our choir was broken open, quite literally broken apart into individual pieces, learning to function alone without the support of that neighbor who sings the same note as us and makes us feel comfortable and confident. Some choir members were brave enough to step up to the mic and lead the service as a solo cantor. Others made recordings at home or came to our makeshift recording studio downstairs in the basement where you would have seen Tom and me in the hallway with a laptop, microphone cables trailing from a classroom where we isolated each singer behind a closed door to make their recording. It was intimidating for group singers to hear themselves solo. They were brave. The choir was literally broken apart into individual re voice recordings, which I reassembled on GarageBand, so we could have, quote, unquote, choral music, an offering for All Saints Day and Christmas and Easter. During COVID isolation, the music ministry became a lot more focused on sound engineering. We learned many things we had previously never th really thought about. Soundboards, cables, mics, reverb, compression, phasing, and all these new words. I personally am so grateful for the vaccinations which have allowed us to be back together. I am grateful that we now have Jenny's leadership and grateful as always for the talent of Bart at the keyboard. Music ministry has always involved congregational singing, a team of talented volunteers, professional leadership, money for music, maintenance of instruments, and paid special musicians for Christmas and Easter. However, if we are going to continue to broadcast our service to a wider audience, this sound engineering piece will continue to be with us as we figure out how to make music sound good for both the congregation in church and the at-home audience. We need to maintain sound equipment and the expertise to run it, and perhaps even a permanent sound technician that isn't a choir member. Tom is glad to be back singing tenor, and if you haven't yet met Mazzy, he's our graduate student from GMU who's temporarily helping us out with sound. Please think about all these things as you consider your pledge. My second ministry is education for ministry. We currently have 12 enrolled in education for ministry, a college-level seminar course offered by the Theology Department of Sewanee, the University of the South. Individuals pay their own tuition, so there's no cost to the congregation. I'm so proud to mentor this group, 
which to me embodies the traits of so many of you at St. Peter's in the Woods. A willingness to dig into the scriptures and understand them better. People not ready to accept a Sunday school lesson or church doctrine at face value, but people who want to question and most of all ask what our beliefs mean to us as we go about our daily lives. To allow our behaviors and attitudes to be changed and transformed by prayer, learning, reflection, and fellowship. And last but not least, creation care, because this is a ministry that is timely and important. If you feel you have no extra treasure or particular talent to offer, take a spare moment or two to learn about the many wonderful species of plants and creatures with which we share this planet. Take a moment to put a cloth bag in your car or take it with you as you go out so you can refuse that single-use plastic bag. Take a moment to learn how you can reduce your own personal carbon footprint. And if you care to, let your voice be heard on issues that could make this a greener, safer place for our children. Be a steward of God's creation. Thank you.